It's been quite a while since I presented any infinite series problems here on the channel. So here's a cool one. It's a sum over the positive integers n of gamma squared n divided by gamma 2n. And it's interesting enough that this thing actually converges. But what's even more surprising is the fact that it converges to a really nice closed form. But that's only surprising at first glance. Because once you dig into a solution development, it's not that surprising anymore, but it is pretty satisfying. And it gives you a pretty cool insight into how the sum was actually constructed in the first place. Let me show you exactly what I mean. I'm going to call the sum S, and I'd like to begin by expanding the gamma functions in the numerator and denominator. So I can write this as a sum over the positive integers n of gamma n times gamma n divided by gamma n plus n. Ring a bell yet? Recall the beta function with complex arguments u and v related to the gamma function by gamma u times gamma v divided by gamma u plus v. Okay, cool. So that means what you have here is a sum over the positive integers n of the beta function evaluated at n and n, as in a sum of beta functions, which is a pretty cool structure too, so it's another cool way of looking at the same sum. Now, building on this beta function approach, we can use the integral representation of the beta function, so beta uv equals the integral from 0 to 1 of x to d u minus 1 times 1 minus x to the v minus 1 dx. So let me just write the sum now as s being equal to the sum over n of the integrals from 0 to 1 of x to the n minus 1 times 1 minus x to the n minus 1 dx. Okay, so further let me write this as the sum over n of the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the n times 1 minus x to the n divided by x times 1 minus x dx. And now, switching up the order of the integration and the summation operators, I can write this as the integral from 0 to 1 of the sum over n of x to the n times 1 minus x to the n divided by x times 1 minus x dx. Now, notice that the switch up has made things very convenient in that this x times 1 minus x factor is independent of the index variable n, so we can write it outside the sum, as in we can write this as the integral from 0 to 1, of 1 by x times 1 minus x times, uh, sorry about that, the sum over n of x to the n times 1 minus x to the n integration with respect to x. It may look like we've made things worse, but that's not exactly the case. We're actually making good progress over here. So I want to focus on the sum, and the fact that I'm integrating from 0 to 1 is pretty useful over here, because we know that if we sum over the non-negative integers k, x to the k, provided that the absolute value of x is less than 1, we get a convergent geometric series that sorts out to 1 by 1 minus x, correct? And that's the case for this series over n as well. We have the sum over n of x to the n times 1 minus x to the n, and because x lies between 0 and 1, the absolute value of x minus 1 by x is always going to be less than 1. So that means we have a convergent geometric series, and this sorts out to... Now you won't start... Uh, you won't have 1 in the numerator now because you're starting your sum at 1. So we have x times 1 minus x instead, that's the first term, 
divided by 1 minus the common ratio, which is x times 1 minus x. So let me just clean this up a bit. We have x times 1 minus x divided by 1 minus x plus x squared. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's pretty much all we need. So this implies that the sum s equals exactly what? Integral 0 to 1. All right, good enough. So integral 0 to 1, 1 by x times 1 minus x. And this sum is being multiplied by it. So we have x times 1 minus x divided by 1 minus x plus x squared. Integration with respect to x. There we go, some wonderful cancellation. And we're now left with the integral from 0 to 1 of dx divided by x squared minus x plus 1. Elementary, my dear viewers. So we started off with a sum and then turned it into a sum of integrals. Then we used, we exploited another infinite series, the geometric series, to turn it into a pure integration problem. And we finally have the integral that's going to solve our summation problem. Okay, cool. And this is a pretty simple integral to evaluate. All we need to do is summon those skills we learned back in high school algebra that are hopefully still better than our skills at basic calculations. Yeah, that one number theory video still haunts me. Thankfully, I was dealing in mod 3 back then. Anyway, so we have this integral, and all I need to do is play around with the denominator, integral 0 to 1 dx divided by x squared minus, I need a 2 here, the x is there, and the factor I need to balance it out it all out is the 1 half factor. And I need the positive 1 half squared here, plus uh, we had this 1 as well, and the negative 1 half squared over there too. Okay, so that means I have the integral from 0 to 1 of dx divided by x minus 1 half squared plus 1 minus a quarter is 3 quarters, right? So what we're left with is a simple inverse tangent structure. So we have this thing here that is actually root 3 by 2 squared in disguise. So that means this sorts out to inverse tangent 2x minus 1 by 2 times the reciprocal of this thing. So that's 2 by root 3. And I need a 2 by root 3 here as well. With the limits being 0 and 1. So the 2's cancel out. I'm left with 2 by root 3 times inverse tangent as x approaches 1, we have 2x minus 1 approaching 1. So we have 1 by root 3 minus inverse tangent. As x approaches 0, we're just left with negative 1 by root 3. But the inverse tangent function is an odd function anyway. So we can pop out that negative sign and that cancels the one outside. So that means we have the inverse tangent of 1 by 3 times 2, and the inverse tangent of 1 by 3 is pi by 6, right? So that means I have 2 by root 3 times pi by 3. Okay, cool. So this implies that the sum over the positive integers n of gamma squared n divided by gamma 2n equals 2 pi by 3 times root 3. Like I said, surprising at first glance, but after going through that solution development, not so surprising anymore, but still pretty satisfying. It's always nice when you have such neat closed forms at the end of solution developments for weird things like the sum of gamma functions. Yeah, that's math for you. Anyway, speaking of math, I recently started a second channel where I'm teaching complex analysis, and I'm going to add more courses with time. So do check that out. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.